and you know one thing how this covid bullshit is annoying wherever you go you need a mask so right now you must have a in your pocket a mask every time like in old days whenever you leave the house you had a condom in your pocket in a case you get lucky or protect from aids now we wear masks not condoms nobody's even having sex anymore <laughs> So here we are, a huge tent for Club 500. Uh, looks like the entrance is from this side, but at least I have parking here. Thanks God. Look at it's like a building. And that's the casino building, actually card room. So the guy checked my temperature, 97, and then uh, got me the mask. <laughs> so there's uh, several games going on, 4-8 limit, 1-3 table just open, and there may be another one right now. So I may jump in. Uh, I want to say on a first look, this place is set so good. They have computers in absolutely everything. I heard in uh, LA casinos, like bicycle and commerce, they don't have computers. So the list is manual. You have to write your name on a board, you know, like truck board or something. This looks really good setup in this huge tent. Now, last night, there were new orders from a governor, dictator. Looks like they're closing casinos again. This open uh, stuff may stay, but we'll see. Uh, you can check on their <laughs> government website if you want. But I'm gonna try find Indian casinos because they don't give a fuck about government. And that's my kind of people. I'm still playing, it's after midnight, I'm here since noon, more than 12 hours, almost 13. I just ordered uh, to eat something, a burger. Looks good, tastes good, fries are really good. Funny part is, about an hour ago, <laughs> I get a message. Hey, are you at the 500 Club? <laughs> what does that mean? Who is it? Well, it's Andre, the guy I met at Thunder Valley. Uh, if you watch my previous video, he recognized me in Thunder Valley. He was steaming and left. Uh, somehow, tonight he's here. Unbelievable. So we have a couple shots of vodka, but here, let me show you. <laughs> so, Jivali, Jivali. Vodka, Polish. We met at the Thunder Valley uh, last, uh, was it Saturday? Four days ago. Yeah. And I'm in Fresno and I got the text message Are you in uh, Club 500? Yeah, so. Now I guess poker is over, vodka time. <laughs> Cheers. 500 club. I played last yesterday, 13 hours. Hey, 13 hours, that's unheard for me. I, I don't remember, probably last time I did that was 2009. So that's the casino and here's the tent. And it's huge and uh, the best so far that i saw the best setup they have tvs uh, uh, heating lamps from above cameras uh, uh, their, their computer system so you can use your cards to check you in 
you know you can put your name on our list so now we're gonna go for day number two I like it I may stay even longer we'll see how it goes today so you can see the heating lamps are on and there's also the ventilation or the heat coming from the ground yep that's the heat here so really good setup really excellent Nothing. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> table and again, someone goes, "Hey, I just watched your videos." So he's my new friend. What's up, man? What's your name? Nick. Nick. And it's, it's you're a, Mr. Vegas. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I watch all his videos, man. Park right next to the RV out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So you got a little rough, ran into pocket paces, but now you're back. You yeah. got the, you got yeah, the pot. Tough yeah. beat. I have pocket queens. Yeah. Queens, yeah. Well, okay, so poker. I usually meet, meet, meet people like this, and uh, that really makes me, you know, satisfied. That's, right. that's the reason now I make those videos, that when right. people recognize me. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not a big star like, <laughs> like some of them, but I'm a fun guy. Yeah, you're yeah. Great, great guy. Okay, let's get back to the game. All right, thanks. The tent is full, all tables are full. It's after 1 a.m. I started on Friday, now it's Saturday. This is the last time we played after midnight because per governor's orders, tomorrow everything has to shut down at 10 o'clock. So when it's closed at 10, means that game's last hand will be dealt at 9.30. And uh, you know, we had to cash out and this is an amazing place, but crazy times of this corona. All right, poker report. So I came here Tuesday about uh, two, three o'clock and uh, went straight to tent. And I was lucky, got a seat immediately. And by the end of the 13th hour, I was up $150 and exhausted. So I said, it's enough. I left. The game was good. A lot of action very juicy it is one three game the buying is i think maybe 500 but after that you can buy in for the amount of the big stack and stacks are huge in a couple hours everybody is playing like 12 1300 new players coming in and without blinking they just buy for 14 1500 you know to match the big stack on my right i had a really good player local guy and i'm gonna name him rusty the most noticeable about him was how lucky he gets whenever he has a good hand or let's say even nuts somebody decides to go all in and he just has to say call there's no other option <laughs> he has the nuts it was ridiculous look at this he has two pair pakitans decide to go all in well he had a good action but a good player and now I'm going to reveal the secret. If he sees this video, I have to say I made him fold pocket aces. What was the hand? I was uh, under the gun and I look at pocket kings. I limp and he's on my left. He raises, makes it 15. Kind of standard. Three callers. Flop is nine, seven, six. I check. He bets 25. One call and I make it 85. Hey, I have overpair, kings. Rusty called the guy folds. Turn is another nine. I bet 100. He think for a while and shows pocket aces and max. So he respected my gray hair, thinking I'm not stupid enough <laughs> and that I play only made hands. Why would I raise on a flop? Think about that. I raised thinking possible straight and I want to see if somebody goes all in of these two guys or you know re-raise me easy fold so i'm risking 85 if not i'm gonna win a good pot that was my logic i couldn't dream that he has aces so with my goofy play i got lucky what if i didn't think about this now what if i didn't raise on the flop he wouldn't have impression that i have uh, some strong hand nines shouldn't uh, scare him so i could lose there a lot 
but I made rusty fall aces. He's not doing that easy. I mean, he's an excellent player. I didn't play so many hints, so I had to talk about his plays. Another good one for Rusty. He has pocket fives. There was raise, re-raise and 120. He calls 120 with pocket fives. Flop is king five four. He bets, Rusty bets 50. Gets a call. Third guy goes all in. He goes all in. And another guy goes all in. Huge pot, like Rusty at that moment had like over 2,000. The other guy had uh, 900 and uh, one on the right side. I think he was about 1,500. Huge pot. There were two clubs on the board, but it comes uh, nine of diamonds and uh, queen of hearts. Rusty shows pocket fives for a set. Guy on the left shows ace king, which was not smart to call uh, two all-ins before him. And the original all in shows pocket aces. Cracked. That's how Rusty plays. Well, I got lucky also sometimes. That's how I got my money back by <laughs> being lucky. So I have pocket eights. There was a pre flop $20 raise. I call and uh, one more guy calls. We see the flop 677. Seven. Oh, come on. I hate paired boards. This guy checks. I bet 50. Both of them call turn is ace i guess one of them must have that ace so when first guy checks i track and the third guy checks the river is eight okay possible straight but i don't think that anybody was sitting here forgot with a gut shot or something guy on my right tracks i bet 125 third guy folds he calls shows pocket sixes so i got lucky but on the river it was not that easy that hand was on uh, Wednesday. I had several lucky hands like that and uh, cashed out actually plus 800. Thursday, Thursday was my wild day. I was up after few first few hours about uh, 500 and comes a moment when uh, I had ace king of clubs. I raised pre-flop and flop was like five, three, deuce, two clubs. I said, let's uh, make the big pot. I can feel it. So somebody made a bet, uh, I think 25, 30, something like that. I make it like 140. And he called. Turn was a spade and he bets 100. Well, I made all in. Just said call, shows 6-4, flop the straight. Painful, river, red card, pain. So I lost in that hand about 600. 10 minutes later, I have a stand of spades. Two spades on a flop. Somebody bets 75. Two callers. What these boys have. I go all in for 325. Two of them call and I have rebuy. So I was up about uh, five, 600 and I blow it. I start getting a little bit more lucky. At pocket kings, flapper king, made it all in. And uh, with a couple more wins, I made it to 800. So now I'm even. Then I get pocket aces, and this is what you like to hear about, huh? There was raise, re-raise, all in times four. Four of us all in. Flop is jack, jack. The guy jumps and screams. Oh! Thanks. Oh! Thanks, oh! Jack. Got me, but I want to turn is so card. River is king. The other guy screams, bang! Pocket kings. Fourth guy shows ace queen. I lost their... Uh, about 400 because they didn't have more than that. Then I won a couple other hands, uh, like I had ace king all in uh, versus uh, pocket sixes. Flop is six, nine, nine. Turn is king, river is nine. The guy goes, what the fuck? What? Nice guy, nice guy, young, yeah, young guy, but uh, couldn't take it. He had several rebuys. This was like a dagger in his heart. Then I have uh, pocket aces. Flap is ace, nine, eight. On a turn, a little concern because of the queen. But when the river came, ten. And the guy went all in. I said, not again. But I make a call. Show my aces. He shows queen, ten. So he stayed around for a gut shot and got runner, runner, two pair and forced himself into rebuy. 
Well, that's the action, and that's how it goes at uh, 500 Club. I'm gonna stay here indefinitely. I'm not leaving till I have money in my pocket or till I am up a million dollars. I like this place. I have a easy parking next to the tent. Nobody's complaining because it's not casino parking lot. It's actually like the strip mall. I let you know next week what's the next move and how the action at 500 Club is going on. This place is becoming my favorite. It may even replace the Ocean's Eleven. And now your favorite, my top five. I'm gonna do a quickie here because video is already long enough. My top five are my first five records that I ever bought. Uh, this was around 1965, six, seven, eight. I lived in a country called Yugoslavia ran by communist government and we didn't have a music from the West. It was around 1965 when the first uh, like DJ started only 30 minutes show and he played some new record. Little later we got uh, a Monday night at 8 o'clock two hour show like top 40 guy was doing really and he was a chess uh, grandmaster with a really weird voice. We were actually just discovering rock, rock music and it was 1965. I was maybe 12 years old and I remember my first record. I was with my mom and my aunt and we were walking downtown and there's a appliance store and they had like four or five records on display in the window. So I'm standing there we were really poor, my mom couldn't afford, afford it, but we just bought a record player just before that, so we don't have other records. I'm looking at it, the choice was really limited, there was not that many, and I said I want this one. It was Eric Bardon and Animals when I was young. The B-side was Sky Pilot. I listened to that record for months, that was the only record I, I had. My second record that I got, I remember, and it is weird one. It is Swedish band, and that record was printed only in Yugoslavia. It was not printed even in Sweden, as it is. Got the band from Sweden, blonde girl singing. Uh, there was a Paul Anka song. There was Hound Dog, Elvis Presley song. My rec number three record, and one of my all-time favorites. I'm a man, Spencer Davis Group, and a 14-year-old semi-god Stevie Winwood singing, playing Hammond organ guitar, 14-year-old. Number four and number five, they came together in a package. There was somehow, we found out, there's a, a mailing uh, a catalog so you order the, uh, they send you the catalog with all new records that came out, even old, whatever, and you can order. In those days, that was 1967 or 8, 1968, I think. In those days, there was no PayPal, there was no uh, international payment system from communist country to England, because this was from England company. So they send you a form, you just put, uh, you know, item number that you want, and you put cash in the envelope. How did I even found British pounds? Because you couldn't send our worthless money from Yugoslavia. You send that money in the envelope with your order. And like three weeks later, I received records. I cannot explain you how they smelled. So number four and number five, they were together in the same uh, shipment. It was White Room by Queen new super band and uh, with a little help of my friends Joe Cocker's version of a Beatles song those two records made me the most popular guy in the whole Belgrade the capital of Yugoslavia I was invited to every party from people that I don't know from strangers but hey by the way can you bring those two records i was the main attraction for at least six months 
Those were the days, my friends. Enjoy. And wish me good luck on a felt. Adios.